Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into a detailed update on my Lenovo Legion 5 2021. After almost 3 years without any thermal paste refresh or fan cleaning, I recently tackled a complete thermal interface upgrade. I'll link the full disassembly video in the description for those looking to see each step. Now, I admit, not performing this maintenance sooner was a mistake. And the temps have shown it. The CPU has been creeping up to 100 degrees Celsius during intensive tasks like video rendering. So, I replaced the thermal paste with the Honeywell PTM7950, the same phase change thermal paste used by Lenovo at the factory, and gave the fans and radiators a solid cleaning. Still, despite the fresh paste and cleaning, the temps stayed high. So, I dug deeper to find what might be the case and how to improve cooling further. In today's video, I will be covering my entire second thermal interface update and show you the results after switching from the original thermal paste to a thermal pad, plus the new liquid thermal pads for extra cooling on the memory chips and power components. For anyone interested in the full process of laptop disassembly, I'll link a separate video below to guide you through it. Before we get started, if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you don't miss new future content. And if you enjoy this video and find it helpful, please support it with a like and feel free to drop any questions or comments below. All right, let's dive right in. First up, I carefully disassembled the laptop and removed the back cover. Here's a tip for you. If you're new to this, be cautious with those clips as they can break easily. My other video has a full guide on safe disassembly. Once the cover off, I disconnected the battery for safety, then removed the cooling system by taking out the screws and unplugging fan connectors. If you've never swapped out your NVMe SSDs before, one heads up, you might need to remove the heatsink as one of the screws that hold the SSD heatsink in place is connected to the fan, which is a part of the cooling system itself. So a little extra disassembly is needed here, but totally manageable. Upon lifting the cooling system, I noticed something unusual. The old thermal paste was still in liquid form. Normally, phase change thermal paste should solidify when cool and turn liquid when heated. But mine hasn't transitioned, which was likely impacting its performance. This time around, I plan to use a solid thermal pad instead, which requires a bit of a different application process. Now, the last time I did this, I definitely went heavy on the thermal paste, but that's okay because the excessive squeezes out naturally. Interestingly, I learned this particular paste has a unique application process. Once you apply it, the paste needs 24 hours to air dry or a quick heat treatment at around 100 degrees Celsius for about 10 minutes. This step is necessary because there is a solvent that keeps it liquid and this drying ensures it reaches the right consistency. But if any of you have more tips on this, I'd like to hear them in the comments. Always room to learn more. Now, onto the cleanup. This time though, I'll be cleaning things up thoroughly before applying a fresh thermal layer. I'll be using wet wipes first to clean any initial grease, followed by alcohol wipes to make sure all the residue is removed. This time, I'll be replacing thermal pads on the memory chips, MOSFETs and power inductors as well. It's been 3 years since they were last changed and I noticed some spillover on the cooling system, likely from the silicone sipping out of the old pads, which may be a sign they're not doing their job as well as they should. For the VRAM, MOSFETs and power inductors, I opted for Lair t Puri T607, a high quality liquid thermal pad. For this project, I'm using a large 35 gram or 10 milliliter tube of liquid thermal pad, though I had more than half left. This material ensures even coverage and fills every gap once the cooling system is reinstalled. The Lair t Puri is dense and challenging to squeeze out, but it's worth it for the added heat transfer. I'm applying it everywhere the original thermal pads were, memory chips, MOSFETs and inductors. 
on the larger components I'm using three lines of paste and on the smaller ones two lines. Keep it in mind it will spread to cover the entire component area. Since I switched to a solid pad I had to measure the chip dimensions precisely. The Ryzen 7 5800H CPU was 14mm by 13mm and the NVIDIA RTX 3060 GPU measured 19mm by 14mm. Using the Honeywell PTM7950 thermal pad, I cut exact size pieces. I used 20 by 30mm pads with a thickness of 0.25mm and since I cut them carefully, I'll only need one pad for both the CPU and GPU, leaving the other for next time. Make sure to have a very sharp knife blade for this part. Next, apply thermal pads directly to the chips, peeling off the protective plastic film from one side of the thermal pad was tricky. These pads are super thin, so take your time with this. I suggest having an extra pad on hand in case of any mishaps. Once I got it right, I placed it on the chip and carefully removed the plastic film from the other side. Trust me, patience is key here. Some sources recommend applying mild heat before reinstalling the cooling system, so I tried using 80 degrees Celsius for a few minutes to see if it would help the new pad set. Then I figured once everything's back together, the internal heat from running test will further help it settle in. All right, it's all looking great, so let's get the cooling system back on. When reassembling, make sure to tighten the screws with the correct sequence, follow the pattern 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and start by only going about 70% tight. Once everything is aligned, go back and secure them all the way, but be careful not to over tighten. Now reconnect the fan cables, plug in the battery, and we're ready to run some tests to see how this new thermal interface performs. Let's check out those temperatures and see the difference. Let's dive into the benchmarks, starting with the Cinebench R23. To really see the difference this maintenance made, I'm going to perform the same test as before. In this Cinebench R23 multi-core run, the maximum temperature during the test hit 85 degrees Celsius, but only for a few seconds. Most of the time it averaged below 80 degrees, which is impressive. The CPU package power stayed around 55 watts, close to the 60 watt max without boost. So it's pushing about 95% capacity. Just as a comparison, in the previous test, the CPU maxed out at a 93 degrees Celsius and the average temperature hovered around 85 to 90 degrees, meaning we're running about 10 degrees cooler this time. Now let's talk the scores. The multi-core score jumped to 11,116 points from 10,748 points, giving us roughly a 3.5% performance improvement and keeping those temps 10 degrees lower. For the single core, we're also seeing a smaller but solid gain, 1,356 points versus the previous 1,330 points, about a 2% improvement. All these tests were done in the balance mode, not in performance mode, where the CPU boost can exceed 60 watts. But just as a side note, I've tried performance mode when rendering and the CPU can pull over 70 watts while staying around 90 degrees Celsius, which is fantastic. I'll also rerun a video render test that previously took the CPU up to 102 degrees Celsius. This time around, with the new thermal setup, it only heat 92 degrees, a full 10 degree cooler. Not only that, but the rendering time dropped from 19 minutes and 21 seconds to 17 minutes and 22 seconds, saving about 121 seconds or just over 2 minutes. These changes brought the temps down significantly and provided a performance boost that wasn't possible before. I'd say the cooling now might even surpass the factory state. Overall, I'm thrilled with the outcome. It's performing better than ever. During light use, the laptop now idles around 40 degrees Celsius, whereas it previously hovered around 60 degrees. Even with an ambient temperature around 25 degrees Celsius. A big difference. 
So this setup is now cooler across the board, whether it's idling or under heavy loads. Thanks for watching. If you find this guide helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment below. I'd love to hear about any cooling upgrades you've done on your own systems. Thanks for supporting the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day and take care. Bye-bye.